these two type of shoulder transitions but before we talk about that I want to ask in what situations do we need to change shoulders when we shoot? The cover. When I take a cover but from the side which is not my strong side obviously. So for example if we talk about that side of the cover right um, that's for me the strong side however obviously from here if I go into cover position right because the threat is there and not over there I'm gonna have to do that place the problem is however is that right now I'm not safe meaning I have a part of my body which is exposed and second I don't have really a natural point of aim why because the gun the gun is not symmetric so I have to force the gun to come in when I force the gun to come in I'm obviously putting myself under a lot of pressure second I'm exposing more now if I don't have time if I'm very close to the threat or primarily again I don't have time I'm simply going to lean out, pop a few rounds quick, or like this, and then go somewhere else. If I'm staying here for a long time, or I want to take an accurate shot, probably I want to get my gun lined up with whatever I'm looking at. Because one, I want to be safer, I'm going to stay here for a longer time, and two, I want to be a little bit more accurate. And like this, I can't be accurate really with this distance. Does this make sense to you? Alright, there are two types of shoulder transitions. All right, there is fancy names, we're gonna keep it simple. Half transition. Full transition. What's the difference? Half transition allows you to correct the natural point of aim in the sense that now my weapon is straight behind the target, but it still has limitation in the terms of safety. Because what I have still exposed here, <coughs> your arm. my arm, okay? Sure, I can do all kind of fancy stuff, right? But still, my arm is in front. So contrary to the belief, the half shoulder transition does not have a lot to do with safety per se. Yes, you expose less, but you still expose your arm, obviously. But it has more to do with keeping your weapon system straight towards whatever you're looking at. Looking at. So a natural point of aim, right? <clears throat> a benefit of a half transition is that you don't change your hands. If I don't change my hands, for example, and I have a stoppage whatsoever, I can really quick adjust it, uh, fix it, and get back into position, right? So I don't change these hands. So behaviorally, for example, if you ask me what kind of a shoulder transition is more behaviorally compliant to a soldier, I would say that's none. But technically speaking, the half transition would be easier for people in comparison to the full. Why? Because with the half transition, there is less of a sling uh, interaction, and both uh, palms stay in the same control points. Nothing changes. So it's very easy for the soldier to do this, fix it, get back into position whatsoever. Same with weapon transition to a pistol. Here, the hand drives the gun down to accommodate the pistol, right? Same happens here. So nothing changes for the brain, really, if we talk about stimuli and everything, Kevin, right? Good. However, it doesn't solve for me safety. A full transition will give me that safety, plus I'm going to be very, very accurate, relatively, from longer distances, when I have the time. In terms of reaction time, actually I'm going to be slower, but that's another story, okay? And so, what's the problem here, however? That is that I switched my control point. This hand used to hold it like this. Now, it's the other way around. So if I have a stoppage, first of all, it's like, ah, uh, fuck, it's kind of weird. And two, the weapon is completely off, so the picture for your brain is completely different. When I have a stoppage, the first thing I see after the tactile is, ah, uh, the weapon is here. It's easier for me to take that picture and associate it with the solution, the procedural uh, thing. But if it would be here, it's a different picture, so there is a fuck up in your brain. Now people say, yeah, train your weak side, so it will be as your strong side. So I'm going to ask this, do you know someone or do you yourself go to the shooting range and train the whole day on your weak side? No. No, most people don't do it. Weak side is going to be weak side. However, theoretically you can of course train it to a very high level of performance, you can. The problem is that the higher the stress is, the lower the chances and the quality of the conduct. Yeah? Good. Okay, let's do it. We're going to focus first on half transition because it's simple. When I'm doing half transition, the only thing you have to do is punch it out, bring it in. 
Another tip you can have if you have two point sling and you have a lot of equipment, backpacks, stuff, cables, is the following, up, inside. You see it will be harder, but it's still possible. So for example, if you want to kneel, compress and do everything at the same time, it will look <coughs> like this. You see? This works very well. We're setting off the, shoulder, the, the stock and everything. Good. Okay, that's the only thing you have to do. Full shoulder transition. 